So the next thing that we're going to talk about are the different components and characteristics that are comprised of a trench coat. And while a lot of these different dynamics are not going to be functional anymore, they still are great to know about so that when you're smoothly strolling into whatever event or situation uh, you're going into, you can have a great conversation piece when somebody asks about your trench coat. And so there are several different components that make a trench coat a trench coat. The first thing that we're going to talk about is the fabrication. Now, if you're a traditionalist, then you're doing the 100% gabardine uh, trench coat that was actually invented by Thomas Burberry. And if you know trench coats, then you know Burberry uh, trenches. You can also do a rubberized version of the trench coat which was again popularized by Macintosh and it was actually reintroduced in the early 2000s um, when it came to uh, different flashy colors that they could incorporate uh, and it was very popular in Japan because it was essentially bought by a uh, Japanese clothing firm and still cool but again it has a, a little bit more of some reminiscence to that bright yellow uh, type of raincoat it's cool it's just a little too flashy for me um, as far as that's concerned um, but then you can also think about Gore-Tex and Gore-Tex is a modern day uh, type of fabrication which a lot of uh, raincoats have taken advantage of as well the last fabric that a trench coat can be made out of is leather now <laughs> Before you go out and buy your leather jacket, just remember that the leather jacket, unless really constructed well, can have you looking like Shaft from the 1970s and it's going to limit your wearability once it gets warmer outside. So that's just something to consider before you go get that leather trench coat. So the next thing that makes an authentic trench coat is the raglan sleeves. Now if you don't know what raglan sleeves are, these are sleeves that are essentially connected to the collar uh, or to the top of the garment. So there's no separation that would be normally seen in sleeves and then they just go out and create the sleeve. Now, if you have that, just know that with the raglan sleeves, depending on the cut and how it's made, it can be a little bit less mobile as far as your arm movement, but that's really not a concern for most guys because they're trying to keep themselves dry. They probably have their hands in their pockets and one hand holding their umbrella so they're not necessarily worried about any extreme different types of movement now when it comes to the traditional uh, trench coat most of those are going to be double breasted and again that has the aspects of the origins of the military background um, to keep everything buttoned up and covered as I made mention earlier this week now again modern day trenches can be single breasted and there's nothing wrong with that but if you are a traditionalist then you do want to go with that double breasted trench coat the next component that a traditional trench coat will have is the epaulets that sit on the side of the shoulders now if you know anything about military dress then you knew that the epaulets were often to denotate rank with the stars that would be put on there but that wasn't the only function when it came to the trench coat you could also put your gas mask or anything else that needed to hang um, on your shoulders so again there was a lot of functionality and that's why you see a lot of those different components which we're going to continue to talk about on there was because you needed to hang things and you needed to be able to keep your hands free so that you could shoot your weapon or to defend yourself with your sword or any of those different types of things. So the next aspect of a traditional trench coat is the gun flap. Now I did not know this but the gun flap actually served two uh, purposes. The first one was to uh, add some padding against the recoil of the rifle but the gun flap was also for uh, keeping the gun dry and making sure that water did not get into the uh, gun when you were traveling so it kept it uh, covered in that space as well. The next component of a traditional trench coat is the hook and eye throat latch. Now the reason why these weren't buttons was because it was much more uh, efficient to 
just unhook the hook and high latch but it does stay very secure when it is hooked together and this is actually very very good when it's raining and it's also windy to keep your collar up and to make sure that you know nothing comes undone or gets wet when you are walking through that type of weather so the next component of a traditional trench coat is the D-ring belt. Now the D-ring belt is also going to have rings that are going to be around the jacket. Now traditionally, again, that was for people to hang all their tools and all the different types of things that they needed. But now it's a great way for you to adjust the uh, silhouette of the garment and make it a little bit more slim and to and trim with the, the waist uh, component. Now some even traditional uh, trench coach will still have the uh, belt loops that you can still make adjustments for but the traditional trench coat won't have any it'll just allow for adjustments again for an easy loosening of the belt or tightening of the belt in a given situation so the next component of a traditional trench is the sleeve straps now those still have function because you can tighten those and when it's raining you're holding your umbrella up you don't have to worry about the rain getting in and under the jacket so the next component of a traditional trench is the deep yoke back saddle on your trench coat. Now this is actually unique specifically to the trench coat. It's a part of no other garment and actually uh, defines the trench coat. And the function of this is, is the way that it's created, it keeps water from falling onto the garment and actually will ensure that it falls to the floor to the ground instead of hitting the garment. The next component of a traditional trench coat is the wedge back. Now this wedge back was functionally for soldiers to move through out war situations uh, efficiently without having um, to create discomfort in that space. Now the same thing could be said when you are trying to run <laughs> to get to your destination. That wedge back allows for mobility um, when you are wearing it and creates a certain level of comfort um, while still keeping you protected from the elements. So the next component of a traditional trench coat is going to be the through storm pockets. Now I thought that this was dope because then you don't have to unbutton your pocket to get to the inside of your pocket. You can just reach in through your pockets. I know that sounds kind of confusing uh, to gain access to your keys, to your wallet, to anything else that you may need while still staying protected from the elements. So the next aspect of a traditional trench coat is going to be leather buckle straps. Um, this was because of the original origins of uh, how the trench coat was made. Um, that if you're a purist, again, you can have the uh, leather, you can have the leather components on your trench coat. Now, again, if you don't don't get mad or don't feel bad about it, uh, a lot of modern day trenches still have the faux leather type of look that may be made out of plastic, um, but it still does have the same function and is still beneficial uh, in that space. So the next component of a traditional trench coat is the checked lining. Why? Because it was created by Burberry and that is its iconically signature lining in its uh, garments. So if you don't have one, don't get discouraged or anything like that. You still may have all those other components and so you still do have a trench coat. It's just not a vintage or traditional uh, trench coat in that aspect. The last aspect of a traditional trench coat is that it is made in London, England. And that is because Thomas Burberry is of English descent and that's where all of the real trench coats came from after Macintosh. Now if you ever find a an original Macintosh uh, <laughs> A trench coat then go ahead and keep that because that's probably worth a lot of money at this point um, but if not and again if it's not made in England that does not mean that you don't have a traditional piece that just means that it is not a vintage traditional piece in that sense so again um, these are all the aspects and components that are going to comprise a trench coat and while there have been all types of different innovations when it's come to uh, how you can interpret the trench coat these are the things that are going to keep it traditional so if you are a purist or if you are a person who wants to get into establishing a traditional type of wardrobe this is not a bad way to go and again 
its components always will communicate a certain air of you being prepared, of you being able to deal with the different elements that your environment may create and will keep you from feeling exposed. So I want you to try that on, see how it fits you. Please go ahead and leave me some comments in the comment box if you do want a more in-depth conversation when it comes to the trench coat as I will be more than happy to provide it for you. I am going to be working on some different elements where we will talk a little bit more about Macintosh, about Burberry and their histories and why they are so important in menswear. Um, so stay tuned for that. Please make sure that you give this a thumbs up if you found the information beneficial. Please make sure that you subscribe if you are feeling the vibe. We have now changed our time. We are no longer going to be showing up at 12 30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We have pushed our time way back to 6.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time to ensure that I am providing you with quality content on a, a daily basis, Monday through Friday. Um, and also just to make sure uh, that everything is uploaded on time because I know I've been a little late, you guys, and I do apologize for that. But thank you so much for being patient with me. And please make sure that you share this with a friend. I can guarantee you they will have a new appreciation for trenches uh, after seeing this video. Lastly, please make sure that you are always dressing yourself with the best of yourself and don't ever forget that dress is nothing more than the expression of a man's state of mind, so you should always dress to express. I'll see you next time. Peace. This is a Chucky Beat production. production.